Okay, so let's start. I'm Dr. Mahin and in this session, I have already lost my, uh, I think, 15 minutes. I'm just uh, going through some examination techniques and to describe the examination technique, I really have to uh, go with some basics and some other uh, things that I will uh, just try to discuss in uh, 45 minutes. I don't know about uh, 45 minutes. Anyway, I have a, a YouTube channel named Imaging Study and obviously we are going through the website of imagingstudy.com. So if you are connected to that, you have some good news from December. So uh, I'll just uh, go with some basics first and uh, it will be important to describe my topic. So uh, when we go with the obstetric Doppler, there are some terminologies that actually makes us confused. Like uh, we want to go for RI or SD ratios or PI. So when will we choose RI and when will we go for the PI? That's a much important. And if you see, uh, these two waves are uh, quite different. But uh, when we check the SD ratio and RI, we check the peak systolic velocity and the end diastolic velocity and these are same for both waves but these waves are not similar so when you want to know the middle part of the wave you have to go with the pi so uh, in case of obstetric we want to know a little change with treatment little change with the patient's condition so we want to go with the pi more but it's easy to remember the SD ratio and RI, that's the clinician wants to know. Uh, but uh, when you want to report it, you always try to use PI along with the RI and SD ratio. And again, we are, as Sir said, we are already dependent to our machine. We want to use the AI. But when you is, use the auto trace option of your machine during the Doppler ultrasound, you may get something abnormal uh, though the patient is already normal. So uh, if you check here, uh, both uh, waves looks quite normal, but when we uh, measured it with auto trace option from different waves, you see the pulsatility index is quite different. So uh, try to trace manually, it will be better and you can manipulate also. And again, as Sir said, uh, you have to adjust the baseline. You see the uh, upper part of the waves are cut down. So you adjust the baseline, uh, then there is a baseline option in our machine. So the waves will look good. And obviously uh, there will be a scale option also. So you adjust the scale. So the upper part will be adjusted like this. And uh, always try to use bigger waves. Uh, okay, these type of small waves are uh, very bad for measurement. So try to use the bigger wave, change your scale, change your PRF, that will be helpful. Again, uh, to reduce the aliasing, you can increase the PRF, that will be helpful. So these uh, options are already available in your machine, try to use them frequently. And there is an angle adjustment, as Sar has already said. So uh, we always try to see the vessel vertically. So you, if you see the vessel looks uh, horizontal, try to see that vessel from different angle to see it vertically that will uh, give you a better wave and better measurement and uh, this is another option that we have already talked in our doppler uh, course if you have attended there so the speed adjustment you see this wave uh, is good but if you want to measure in detail this is not a very good wave so try to increase the speed of the uh, decrease the speed of the wave there is a speed option in your machine so the wave will look like this so uh, if you want to assess the uh, uh, peak systolic velocity and end diastolic velocity and the middle one, so this type of waves will be better. And again, there is a focal zone option we don't use frequently in our country. I don't know why. So uh, when you want to see a vessel, you should use the focal zone at that part. So uh, uh, that area will be focused by your machine. So in summary, these adjustments will be helpful. So if you see a high velocity vessel, try to increase the PRF, decrease the color gain, and we don't actually change, but you can change the wall filter. You can increase it. Okay, so we have some uh, terminologies uh, that has been changed uh, in recent days. So if you haven't seen this guideline, try to follow this. We are already uh, using this in our country. So if you are beginner, you should go for that. So in last uh, era, we use triphasic, biphasic and monophasic terms. 
when we uh, deal with the carotid artery, we told that uh, this wave is biphasic, but when we deal this wave in our lower limb, we called it monophasic. So that makes some confusion. So nowadays the terminology has been changed to multiphasic and monophasic. If you see a wave that is above and below the baseline, we call it multiphasic. And if you see the wave is in any one direction of the baseline, we call it monophasic. There are so many terminologies, descriptors available in the journal. So you should follow this consensus. Now come to our main topic, the vessels. I'll go with these five vessels and uh, there is a lecture on aortic isthmus. I won't uh, cover it here because of time. Okay, so the uterine artery. Uterine artery is the branch of internal iliac artery that comes uh, to the uh, lateral part of the uterus and uh, this is the area of cervix where we easily can detect the uterine artery in non-pregnant state. So this is a transvaginal ultrasound and in transverse section you can see there are the lateral vessels, uh, prominent vessels along the uterine wall. So these are the uterine arteries. And they give branch to uh, the uh, muscular part and uh, to the endometrium. So you can see on transverse section there are so many vessels uh, giving to supply to the endometrium. And uh, we can see these vessels like uh, uh, the uterine artery gave the first branch of arcuate artery, then radial and then spiral artery. These are tiny vessels, these are tortuous vessels, but during pregnancy, it will get changed. So uh, where we can see these vessels actually, so these are the external iliac vessels. So you can just move the probe laterally in longitudinal section and you can see these vessels. And there will be another vessel that will cross this external iliac vessel and that is the uterine artery. So we'll take this type of section. So you see, these are the external iliac vessels. You just go lateral to the uh, inguinal region. You can see these vessels. And crossing these vessels towards the uterus, uh, showing aliasing, this is the uterine artery. So just uh, when you are doing the ultrasound of pregnancy, you just go laterally from the uterus at the cervical region. You see some lateral part ending of the uterus. There are some aniquate vessels here. Just put the color Doppler and you will see the external iliac vessel and the uterine artery is crossing over this vessel. So this is the uterine artery that we were looking for. So we have to take samples from this area and uh, we will measure it a little bit later. Okay, so these are the external iliac vessels. When you go laterally, you can see these vessels and just put the color Doppler, you will see this. So just go laterally from the lower part of the uterine segment, you can see that vessel. So magnify the vessel, this is always a very good choice to magnify the image while doing ultrasound and Doppler. So now we want to uh, take the sample, always try to take sample from as much distal as possible. Because when you go to the adjacent to the uterus, you will just see the vessels are giving branch. So the resistance will get increased at that part. So we always try to take from this area if it is possible. So we have taken sample and you can see this is the uterine artery giving a monophasic flow. Okay, so these are the flow and we have taken measurement. We have manually traced and our machine will give a lot of data that we want to know a little bit later. So another view, the external light vessels and you can see this vessel is crossing the external iliac vessel and this is nothing but the uterine artery. So nowadays we have changed our uh, programming and we have implemented a lot of different things like we can use the 3D to demonstrate how the tortuosity and how the appearance of the uterine artery is. This is the uterine artery and these are the umbilical vessels so uh, cut was taken adjacent to that part. So this is the uterine artery giving supply to the uterus and uh, in this image we also can see the umbilical arteries. So this is the, just a graphic picture but uh, in near future there will be a very big change of ultrasound where you can see this type of angiographic pictures and interpretation. Anyway, so let's come to the uh, normal findings so in non-pregnant state. 
So in non pregnant state, we get a very high resistance flow. High resistance means low diastolic flow, high peak systolic flow. There is a big difference between the systolic and diastolic, which we actually check with the RI or PI. So in non pregnant state, in proliferative phase, there is actually an RI of 0.88 plus minus something. And in secretory phase, it gets decreased due to increased flow. And in case in the day of ovulation, due to uterine contractility, uh, there will be an increase of RI to 1. There will be no diastolic flow. So this is another way by which you can understand the day of ovulation. But if there is a PCOD or an ovulatory cycles, there will be no change of RI with time. So this is the picture and there is another important finding. Uh, in between systole and diastole, there is a uh, notching here. So this is called the early diastolic notch or uh, uh, end systolic notch, whatever you say. So this notch is very important. This is a typical feature of uterine artery or its branches. So this notch should get absent in late trimesters. So in case of pregnancy, what will happen? You see the tortuous vessels, you need to change them. So you will uh, dilate them and you will make them straight to give a very good supply to the uterus, to the fetus. And for that, uh, the vessels will get dilated and the resistance will get decreased. So it will give a good amount of flow to the uterus. So there will be a decrease of RI and PI with time and uh, it, we easily try to remember that in third trimester the ri should get less than 0.58 but there is uh, so many bigger charts so uh, it will get changed the diastolic flow will get increased with time and we will see the absence of end diastolic notch in third trimester early uh, diastolic notch okay so uh, these are the bigger charts so it's well available in websites and internet and your books so you can also use the uh, fetal medicine foundation website or if you are a member you can use icg calculator also so uh, this is the uterine artery in a pregnant state of 26 weeks of gestation and good amount of flow you can see here and the resistive index is 0.36 that is very good uh, so this early diastolic notch should get absent by 22 weeks of gestation but we uh, usually try to remember that this should get absent in a third trimester or after 24 weeks uh, but there are some features of uterine artery ri or pi changes in early pregnancy with which we can detect the abnormality of the future which will be talked later uh, okay so this is the uh, normal and abnormal findings like you see there is no diastolic uh, early diastolic notch and uh, uh, here is the early diastolic notch and this resistance is quite high so uh, another thing to uh, remember that uh, when uh, the placenta lies laterally you will see there is a difference between the ri to the side of placenta you will see the less ri of uterine artery because that is the giving supply to the uterus mainly and on the other side you will get the increased ri also, uh, if there is sympathomyometrix used or hit uh, application, there will be change. And also uh, in labor due to contractility, we see the change of uterine arterial flow. But mainly this uh, lateralized placenta actually will disturb you a lot. So if you see a placenta uh, in the anterior and posterior both walls, you always should use the transducer transversely to see whether it is on the right lateral wall or on the left lateral wall. To assess the lateralized placenta so in this patient uh, we saw that the uterine artery of both sides doesn't look quite normal so you see uh, the RI here is quite bigger like 0.52 as 0.62 and on the left side it was a 0.46 and obviously the flow velocities are also different um, so it's nothing but due to the lateralized placenta Okay, so the abnormal waveform is very easy. You will see the increase in resistive index and pulsatility index. You will see the early diastolic notch. And if it gets worse, then you will see the intrasystolic notch also. So deeper the notch, that is the badder thing. Okay, so uh, here you can see uh, there is a early diastolic notch uh, which is present in third trimester should be counted as abnormal. 
and in this picture you can see there is an intrasystolic notch which is another bad thing and if you see the intrasystolic notch you should get ready to terminate the fetus if the condition is suitable so here in this uh, picture you can see there is a notch here quite like notch like thing so we check that uh, we if you feel confused you just check the ri the ri is very high here so the, there is a notch and there is a, a, a high ri uh, which is bad here and on the left side you also can see there is a good notch here and the resistance is also increased so uh, this increase in ri actually indicates that the increased resistance of the spiral arteries and obviously it might be due to the placental poor poor placentation now uh, so this uh, abnormal pattern of uterine artery actually indicates you that there is something abnormality coming soon because you are not giving proper blood supply to the uterus so there will be some abnormality in near future like preeclampsia eclampsia or placental aberration or uh, fetal growth restriction may happen so uh, try to rem uh, forget everything and try to remember that if you see there is increased resistance this is bad if you see early diastolic notch this is better and if you see the intrasystolic notch this is the baddest thing okay so come to the fetal circulation we will go with the umbilical artery and in case of umbilical artery uh, you see uh, first that placenta is the oxygenator it gives a, uh, oxygenated blood and this is a huge amount of blood so if you transfer this blood to the uh, liver uh, the liver will get damaged congested so we make some bypasses here so we make the ductus venosus that transfers a lot of amount of blood to the inferior vena cava and inferior vena cava drains it into the right atrium now the lungs are not used too much in gestational age so we want to transfer the, this blood also so most of the blood goes to the left atrium through the foramen ovale and uh, in case of her uh, left side uh, sorry so in case of left side the whole blood that goes to the aorta and goes to the whole of the body and on the right side if you transfer this amount of blood to the lungs that will also disturb the lung so uh, we want to make another shunt that is called the ductus arteriosus and we transfer that blood to the aorta also so uh, the principle is to transfer as much as possible to the left side actually to supply the whole body so we have uh, different new connections like ductus venosus we have foramen ovale we have ductus arteriosus we try to use them to interpret the condition of the fetus so in case of umbilical artery uh, these are the branches arising from the uh, hypo uh, the internal iliac artery of the fetus they're two in number not constant for everybody it might be three in number also it might be one in number also you have to check that so it will change with time and with time the diastolic flow will get increased so the pattern will get into a sawtooth appearance so uh, the we want to check the sample from a free loop of the umbilical cord not at the part of placental insertion not at the part of fetal insertion and the fetal movement fetal breathing may disturb you to measure the wave so always try to measure the umbilical cord when the fetus is in a still condition and we try to measure the sd ratio we will measure everything but you have to know what clinicians try to remember usually our clinicians try to remember the sd ratio so if you don't write their sd ratio they won't love your report so uh, this is the umbilical cord containing uh, two two arteries and one veins so this is the umbilical cord uh, of different views so uh, if you magnify you will see two tiny arteries and a uh, one large vein so we can also change it to a three-dimensional image to get a very good view so this is the uterine artery coming and this is the umbilical cord in a three-dimensional image so we'll change a lot this type of images in recent future so uh, we have talked about taking sample from the middle part if you don't take sample from the middle part you will see some ab uh, abnormal changes like if you see this area 
it has been taken from the cord inserting area and the SD ratio is 4.1 SD means systole by diastole and if you take it from the middle part it shows 3.3 and if it is measured from the placental side it shows 2.6 so that makes confusion so we always try to measure from the mid part so here is the technique we just take a sample from an umbilical after umbilical cord try to magnify the image decrease the gain and try to take a sample from this area we always try to make the gate a little bit wider to take both arterial wave and the venous wave so this is the wave we like so we measured from the systolic peak to the diastolic end uh, through manual trace option and the machine will give a lot of measurements here but we usually try to focus on the SD ratio because it's easy okay so uh, we have to be careful uh, always try to make the sample a little bit bigger to take both arterium and uh, venous waves so sometimes we uh, get this type of confusing pictures like all the waves are not look similar and you see some gaps here some different types of color here that is because of fetal respiration and fetal movement so try to measure when the fetus is in a steady condition so here is the uh, complaint you can see this wave looks good but these are not good so just try to wait a little bit and try to take the wave from a very good picture so this is the good picture and you can see the measurements look quite good so the ideal technique is that you have to take at least three waves look similar and looks good then you can measure from that part okay uh, a little bit carefulness is needed because sometimes the heart rate is very low due to the fetal cardiac block and that and at that time you may see a long wave with a reduced diastolic flow another uh, uncommon finding you may see sometimes some ectopic bits like uh, here you can see the waves look normal normal but here is a little gap here and this is the ectopic bit which may also come due to the fetal condition and these are the normal values so like ri and pi if you have no time you can just try to remember that or you can use the calculators available in the internet okay also you, in your machine there is a uh, calculator and they will also give you the regular data so these are the SD ratios of different uh, age we usually don't remember we usually try to remember these two things like before 28 weeks the SD ratio should be less than 3.5 and after 28 weeks the SD ratio should be less than 3 this is the uh, easy thing to remember but not actually totally accurate thing to always follow but when you see the our, uh, SD ratio is increased in that age then you will try to evaluate more with that graphs and those charts so uh, the uterine artery uh, umbilical artery flow will get changed with time and the diastolic flow will get increased so with the bad condition what happens the placenta gives an increased resistance they don't want to take the blood from the umbilical arteries so the resistance get increased the diastolic flow get decreased and the SD ratio get increased so the umbilical artery will show high SD ratio you can see it is 4.6 right now and in this patient you can see it is 20 weeks of gestation very early for that and uh, the SD ratio is 3.9 okay and when we check the problem uh, this was a fourth gravita and the patient came from a rural area uh, for a proper treatment and the uh, sonologist who did the ultrasound anomaly scan uh, she has written that the, there is an arrhythmia so this was sent to us for fetal echocardiography the heart was normal so the condition was there was two, two layer of cord around the neck this is uh, quite normal for early ages but it may also affect the fetus so in our case uh, we check that the heart doesn't look quite normal uh, during the beating it looks quite arrhythmic so when we check the heart rate at the first time it was 142 but at the late hour it gone to 92 beats per minute so the cords around the neck are affecting the fetus 
okay so the abnormality the resistance get increased and also at the end of increased resistance you will see the absent in diastolic flow there is no diastolic flow this is bad uh, here you can see there is no diastolic flow only the peak of systole here so this is a bad thing sometimes you if you check uh, there are some reversal also so this is a very bad thing and uh, at the another one this is the reversed end diastolic flow this is also another bad thing so diastolic flow may get de uh, reversed so if you see this reverse flow in the uh, umbilical artery you should get careful and be ready to deliver the fetus if the condition is suitable so uh, the uh, so the abnormalities are the decreased end diastolic flow absent end diastolic flow and the reversed end diastolic flow so this is bad this is badder and this is the baddest thing okay the middle cerebral artery so middle cerebral artery is the supply of the fetus so it will give you an idea about the fetal brain resistance so usually in the brain you don't need to give a too much supply so the resistance will be high in brain and uh, if you check the resistance uh, it will be around 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 we'll talk it a little bit later so where to take the doppler we'll try to magnify the image and this is from the sylvian fissure region we'll see the scanning and if you put the doppler you can see the vessel and we always this is the middle cerebral artery arising from the circle of willis we always try to take sample from the proximal part you go distally you will get increased resistance so you try to take from the proximal part of the middle cerebral artery so here's the typical bipartal diameter view you all know about this view so try to uh, sweep the prop a little bit you will see this is the sylvian fissure region when you see this bat like area sylvian fissure region so you will just put the color doppler if you put the color doppler you can see this type of uh, beautiful uh, circle of willis and you magnify the image you try to locate where you want to take the sample don't take sample from the distal vessel try to take sample uh, that is nearby to our transducer and we took the sample ignore this uh, angle correction it's not needed so we took the sample and you see uh, this is the wave it doesn't look good so try to uh, magnify the wave uh, by changing the PRF or a scale of your option and you will take uh, measurement from uh, that view another picture you can see this uh, middle cerebral artery so magnify the image try to take from this area that will be a better part and try to take sample from here and try to take the measurement so uh, so we see the uh, ri and pi of these vessels uh, which are very difficult to remember and also we take the um, uh, peak systolic velocity of middle cerebral artery which will help us to detect the fetal anemia you all have seen the fetal anemic cases but you don't want to measure the middle cerebral artery in case of hydrops fetus you all have seen hydrops fetalis patients always try to take the measurement from the middle cerebral artery to exclude anemia and uh, this is another chart it's easy to remember actually then that mob top something like thing so just uh, follow the measurement and if you see uh, it's crossing that level you will measure it as severe moderate or mild anemia so it's easy to remember in third trimester in late pregnancy if you see the peak systolic velocity is more than 60 centimeter per second you will try to check that those charts otherwise usually you don't need that so in middle cerebral artery flow uh, we uh, take a lot of different measurements but uh, if you want to remember it's easy to remember that the middle cerebral artery resistive index is 0 0.7 to 0.9 so if it gets bad the resistance will get decreased now let's talk about that so in case of middle cerebral artery it's quite different when uh, you are in a very bad condition your body will always try to save your brain so it will give supply more to the brain and decrease supply to the peripheral vessels so that will be uh, detected with doppler so if you take the sample from the uh, middle cerebral artery now the resistance will get decreased so the ri will get decreased now uh, so the vessels will get dilated so here's the change you can see 
the resistance is getting decreased the diastolic flow is getting increased this is the bad thing for the brain now uh, this pattern uh, to save your brain and uh, reducing the flow in the peripheral vessel is called the brain sparing effect your body is trying to save your brain now what is the confusion or what uh, we make the mistake you are dilating the fetus is very young like uh, less than 36 weeks of gestation when the endothelium of the blood vessels are not good enough now if you deliver the baby at this time the vessels are dilated but uh, the conditions have been removed the worst condition in the womb of the mother now your vessel will try to contract because it will uh, try to get in a normal position but there is no good wall of the vessel so it will just tear down the vessel and there will be an intracranial bleeding so make sure if you see any uh, of these brain sparing effects in 30 less than 36 weeks of gestation and you deliver the baby you should always check the fetal uh, neonatal brain to exclude intracranial hemorrhage okay so that uh, cerebral placental ratio we want to make it a little bit easy so we compare the middle cerebral artery resistive index or pulsatility index and the umbilical artery resistive and pulsatility index so as we know the middle cerebral artery should always get an increased resistance so this measurement should always be more than one and if you see this is less than one that will be abnormal or brain sparing effect so in my this patient you see the middle cerebral artery shows 0.8 and umbilical artery 0.6 so the ratio is 1.3 but in this case you see the resistive index of umbilical artery is quite high so now the cerebral placental ratio is 0.8 so this is the bad thing so this cerebral placental ratio of decreased number actually indicates that the fetus is in a very bad condition and you may need the NICU support so this is the bad thing to get an dash increased diastolic flow but at the later period if the body fails to manage those uh, mechanisms then there will be a decrease of diastolic flow and there will be no endiastolic flow this is the baddest thing so lastly the ductus venosus i think i am short of time right now so uh, i won't go very long so at the, in the ductus venosus this is actually the connecting channel so it will uh, act as a shunt so it will give a very high amount of flow so you will get a rapid flow and with this flow we always try to evaluate the condition of the fetus condition of the fetal heart and uh, how can we detect that you see this is the abdominal circumference or ac view in this view if you put the color doppler you will see a lot of vessel but you see there is an aliasing here so we will focus on this aliasing part so magnify the image focus on this aliasing part this is a shunt this has a high velocity flow so it will show you aliasing at the abdominal circumference view so just try to put color doppler uh, sample from this part and you will see this type of wave here so this is a w shaped wave and obviously on a single direction not in both direction so we'll talk a little bit later so here you can see i have taken another abdominal circumference view and this is the umbilical cord inserting as an umbilical uh, portal vein umbilical vein and portal vein and you see there is a tiny vessel with aliasing inserting into the inferior vena cava this is the aorta and this is the inferior vena cava this is the stomach this is the hepatic veins so this channel uh, connecting the portal vein to the inferior vena cava is nothing but the um, ductus venosus so this is the ductus venosus connecting the portal vein to inferior vena cava so if you can't make that type of image don't get worried try to take a sample from any vessel in the middle part of the abdomen giving you aliasing so here you can see i can't understand which one is the ductus venosus but here i can see some aliasing at this part so i have taken sample from this area and that might be the ductus venosus so in ductus venosus there will be an s wave positive s wave there will be a d wave and there will be a positive a wave if you see the continuous of wave this is normal if you see a gap between these two waves that will be counted as abnormal so here is another abdominal circumference view and if you put color doppler you can see this is the ductus venosus here 
and uh, we have taken sample and you can see this w shaped wave pattern here so you can also take it from an early pregnancy fetus uh, when you are doing the nuchal translucency scan so you all uh, you also can see this is the aliasing area and this is the s wave and d wave and a wave so it will always show an unidirectional flow and if the condition gets worse then the flow may get back which we will see a little bit later so the peak systolic velocity we can measure a lot of different things but we usually do it by visualization we don't go for this type of complicated things if not needed so uh, you see there is a gap between two waves and there is a backflow this is the reversed a wave which is abnormal it may get also absent so a uh, little bit carefulness is needed uh, sometimes you may say these are the reverse wave no you always should see there is a continuation of waves so if there is any gap that will be abnormal but there is no gap the flow is continuous so what are these things these are from different adjacent vessels like if you uh, collect the sample uh, adjacent to the inferior vena cava you will get pick from those parts and uh, so this is the normal thing with uh, the continuous flow and this is the abnormal thing with the reverse flow so this is a uh, bad or better thing to have a absent diastolic flow and obviously the reverse flow is abnormal so i will end with the uh, umbilical vein and it will be very short umbilical vein is nothing but the vein you have seen with the umbilical artery and uh, if you see it too much pulsatile that will be abnormal so uh, there are some velocity charts which uh, you may not need it so these are the umbilical vein it's uh, uh, giving a different phase or different pattern with the fetal respiration so the pulsatility of the feet, uh, umbilical vein should be taken carefully especially if the fetus is breathing it's normal but the fetus if the fetus is not breathing at that time this type of pulsatility may indicate abnormality so you see the umbilical artery also has the absent endastolic flow so this is quite abnormal so that's all for my session and i have just uh, added a report here but unfortunately i think it may not be well visualized from those part okay so i'd love to give a special thank to my teachers because i'm a trainee of this center nine years back and uh, fortunately i have an opportunity to speak here also so thank you if you have any question you can ask or I may get uh, out of time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr.